And welcome to online worship at Zion Lutheran Church in Buffalo, Minnesota. Let me share a couple of things, uh, announcements with you as we get started today. Uh, first of all, during the summer months, we have uh, traditionally had worship at our Marysville building. Uh, we will be having worship at 7 p.m. Monday evenings for the month of June. And then we will evaluate and see how that's going uh, so please uh, stay tuned and join us on Monday night. Uh, in addition to that, uh, during the week, you can pick up the little packets that we have for communion, if you would like, in one little pod. It has a wafer and uh, grape juice for you to uh, use for communion at home. Uh, feel free to do that. Uh, the building is going to be open on Sunday mornings and then Monday through Thursday. Uh, stop in uh, those same times and uh, take a look at the Sanctuary Renewal Project if you would like and uh, kind of track along the progress. And then finally, uh, because the building is open now, we do not have the drop-off site for offerings through the door. And so if you would like to drop off your offering during the week, please do that when the building is open and bring it into the office, and someone will take it for you. There are other announcements. Please make, please make yourself aware of those uh, at another time. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help, help us. us. It, it is, is hard, hard to believe there is enough to share. We, we question your ways when, when they, they differ from, from the ways of the world in which we live. We, we turn, turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And And also also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word of God, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Parents and sponsors, as you bring Blair to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in her hands the Holy Scripture, and nurture her in faith and prayer, so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Blair grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, I do. I do. And gathered people of God, do you promise to support Blair and pray for her, along with Jenna and Timothy, in her new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. Parents, sponsors, and gathered folks, I ask you to confess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. I renounce them. And now we join Christians throughout the world in affirming our faith, using the words of the Apostles' Creed, answering these questions. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe believe in in God God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, God's God's only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I should bring there in then. And you the font. Blair Evelyn, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's nice and warm, though. It's not too bad, is it? (laughs) I invite you to gather around and lay a hand on on Blair, or uh, just to put a hand towards her anyway. And let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, through water and the Holy Spirit. You give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Blair with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Blair, Evelyn, child of God, You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Let your light so shine before all people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. The cross of Christ is an important symbol, and on behalf of the congregation, we give you this handmade wooden cross as a remembrance of three things, of this day, of baptism, and of Christ's command, take up your cross and follow me. 
Through baptism, God has made you a member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus, that you may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all people. I invite you to please join me in welcoming Blair into God's family and into the Zion family with the words in your bulletin. We welcome you, Blair, into the body of Christ and into the mission we share to share Christ's word, strengthen faith, and serve those in need. And now we can welcome her with a round of applause. Our first reading today comes from the book of Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Zion Kids, does this room look a little bit different than you remember? This is the sanctuary. The carpet is gone right now, so the floor might look a little bit different because they're redoing some of the sanctuary. But what you might recognize are these panels that are on the wall behind me. There are three panels. Can you see all three of them? Well, the reason that I brought you in here today to see these three panels is because today is Trinity Sunday. We're talking about the Trinity. And the Trinity is a little bit of a mystery. It's a tough thing to understand. But sometimes you hear these three names for God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You might have even heard them earlier in the service today when you saw Pastor Dave baptize that little baby. And when we baptize, we say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Those are three different ways of being, but they're all God. God is Father and Son, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. We might think of God like the creator and the redeemer and the sustainer. There's so many different ways to imagine God. Well, the reason that I brought you in here is that sometimes we see symbols that can remind us about all the different ways that God exists. So this piece of art behind me, actually, if you look really closely, has a symbol for each of those three parts of God. Do you see something that looks like some big ripples or circles? Those might remind you of God the Father, because God the Father created the whole world from nothing, rippled out into existence. So when you see those circles, remember that God is Father. But then you might also see a symbol that looks like a cross. Do you see the cross? It's all the way over on this panel. That symbol might remind you of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus was God who came to live in a human body and walk around and be on earth with people, but Jesus was still God, a different way of being God. And then there's one more. Can you look really close? Also over by the cross, you might see a shape that looks like a flame. That flame might remind you of the Holy Spirit. Last week, you heard the story about Pentecost. (coughs) Excuse me. (laughs) In Pentecost, the disciples were all in one room, and they were waiting for this promise that Jesus had said the Holy Spirit would come and be with them. And you know what happened? A wind blew through the room, and there were these shapes that looked like tongues of fire. They looked like this shape that was above their heads. It was pretty crazy. But what it did was it it reminded them that God's Spirit was in them and around them. God would never leave them, even when the person of Jesus wasn't with them. So sometimes we see fire as a representation of God's Holy Spirit, a different person of God. So one more thing I want you to see in this art that reminds you of the Trinity is how many panels do you see? How many squares do you see? There's one, two, three different squares. But you know what? They're all actually just one picture. They make up one big picture together. They're not just individual squares. They're one big picture that has all of these different symbols about God. 
So next time that you're in the sanctuary, it'll be a couple weeks till it's finished in here, and some things will look different, but this art will still look the same. And you can look at that and think about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's what we call the Trinity. All three parts are God. So let's close in prayer today. Dear God, our Trinity, thank you for being present to us in so many different ways. Help us to remember that you are Father and Son and Holy Spirit. And all of God's children said, Amen. Our gospel reading for today comes from John chapter 3. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, 
We know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, How can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Well, today is Trinity Sunday in the life of the church. It's a Sunday that we um, celebrate the Trinity, a triune God, and um, And we try and help ourselves understand it just a little bit more. Trinity Sunday is kind of hard because it's so difficult for us to really grasp the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three in one. One God, each one fully God in and of themselves, and together, God. The church has written creeds about this. Uh, we try and um, to try and help us understand, or at least state what we believe. The Athanasian Creed goes into detail. Um, the the Apostles' Creed that we traditionally read uh, during worship has three articles: one about the Father, one about the Son, and one about the Holy Spirit. So. One Sunday, I I, uh, heard a pastor tell the story about one Sunday. Um, It was Trinity Sunday, and she was going to try and preach on the Trinity. And she was going to help the congregation understand it once and for all. And uh, she was very proud. She thought she really got it down, had a great explanation of the Trinity and that it was really going to help people. And after the worship service, an older woman came up to her and um, said, Pastor, thank you for the message. I really enjoyed it. I've been hearing messages about the Trinity all of my life. But after today's message, and the pastor thought, ah, she's going to say, now I really understand it. But after today's message, now I know pastors don't understand it either. It is. It's difficult to understand. This three in one, they're Father, Son, Holy Spirit, each one of them fully God, and together they are fully God. We can't separate them out. They're distinct, but we cannot separate them from one another. Theologians, pastors, you know, lay people, everybody has struggled to try and grasp this concept of the Trinity. Augustine, one of the great 
theologians in the early years of the church. Uh, Augustine died in 430 A.D. Uh, the story, legend says that Augustine had a dream one night. He had been thinking about the Trinity, and he really wanted people to understand it. And he himself wanted to understand it better. And it's sort of like he got obsessed with it. And it was all he was thinking about. And one night he had a dream. And in this dream, he was walking along the beach, and he saw a little boy who had a pail. And he watched the boy, and the boy um, was scooping up water, and then he'd walk up onto the shore, back up on the land a little ways, and he'd dump the water out. And he'd walk back down and get another pail of water and walk back up to the same spot and dump it. And so in this dream, Augustine asked the boy, so what are you doing? And the little boy replied, I'm moving the ocean. And Augustine said, you'll never be able to do that. And in the dream, the little boy looked straight at Augustine and said, neither will you understand the depths and mysteries of the triune God. How can we? We're the ones that have been created. It is beyond our finite minds. Our minds are limited. It remains a mystery, yet a mystery that encourages us, a mystery that speaks to us, a mystery that helps us understand God. Over the years, um, people have been trying and trying to help us understand the Trinity, and I'm sure some of you out there have heard the illustration of a shamrock, a three-leafed clover. So if you go out into your yard and you've got clover and you're looking for a four-leaf clover, don't pick that one. That one's valuable. But if there's a three-leaf clover, pick it up and take a look at it. The three-leafed clover has three of them. One, two, three. And all of them are the same. Fully a leaf. But all together, they are a clover. Three in one plant. Now, there's problems with any human illustration that we ever find. Every, every one of them. So, the problem with the three-leaf three clover is that if you pull one of those leaves off, it's no longer part of the clover. In and, itself, in and of itself, that leaf is not fully God. But the three-leaf clover, in and of itself, three in one. Again, we've been trying to understand the Trinity <laughs> uh, as long as there has been a Christian church. And all of these are going to fall short. But that's one of the things that can help us. Three in one, one in three. I've got another illustration that, um, that I was given when I was in confirmation way back at First Lutheran Church in Brookings, South Dakota. And um, I remember it in our confirmation class. I went on Saturday mornings. And... Um, the, the pastor, a retired pastor that was teaching, um, I remember him talking about the Trinity, and he used the illustration of an apple. So I have an apple here, my favorite kind of apple. It's a red delicious. And if you take the red delicious apple and you cut it open, you can cut that in half. And when you open it up, you find three different parts of the apple. But it is one apple. You have the core, where it all comes from, right? The seeds, sort of the 
creative part of the apple. You could say that's like God the Father. And then you have the white part, the meat that we uh, like eating so well, and that's like the Holy Spirit. Again, all three in one. And then you have the outside, the red part. That's the flesh. And so it only makes sense that we would talk about this um, representing God who came to us in the flesh, Jesus. So, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Again, three in one. Well, the problem with the apple is sort of the same as the, um, as the problem with the shamrock or the three-leaf clover. In and, its, in and of itself, this white part that we like to eat isn't fully the apple. The apple is made up of all three parts together. And so, again, it falls short. The apple, the shamrock, water coming to us in three different forms. All of those help us understand a little bit better about three in one. But the important part is that all three are fully God. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, each one of them fully God in and of themselves and together they are fully God. And God comes to us in these three different ways, I think, for our own benefit. I believe in God who created everything that exists. It helps us to understand God the Father or God the Creator as the one from whom everything flows. It helps us understand how we got here. God created all that exists. And then we believe in Jesus, the Son, who was God coming to us. God came to us in the flesh in a way that we could see and understand. And God continues to come to us in the bread and the wine and the water of baptism in ways that we can see and better understand or at least see and touch and feel this invisible reality which is God coming to us for our sake. And then the Holy Spirit. God coming to us as the Holy Spirit to continue to help us to sustain our faith, to encourage us along, to comfort us. God present in the world today. I think on this Trinity Sunday, um, my words fall short. Um, every illustration that we can ever come up with is going to be inadequate. But we never stop trying to explain. It's kind of like this past Mother's Day. I went out and I bought a card for my wife. And I bought some flowers it was Saturday, Saturday night. I went out and got those so that they would be there for her on Sunday morning. Well, I wrote, uh, or I, um, after she had gone to bed, I got everything ready for um, Mother's Day morning so that she would be able to wake up and see a card and the flowers right away. And I went to write out the card and I had left it at the store. You know, when it went through the checkout lane, I had stuck it in a little plastic bag and set it to the side. I didn't put it into one of the bags right away. And so when I got home, no card. And it was too late to run out and get one. So I had to write out um, the words that I wanted to say to my wife. I wanted in that card to express how much I appreciated her, how proud I was to be married to her, how I loved her and was committed to her, and how she made me a better person. I wrote it all out, and at the end of that, I realized my words are inadequate. 
but I can't stop trying to express it, to express my appreciation, my love, my commitment, even though it falls far short of saying what I really want to say. The Trinity is like that. Every illustration we have is going to come up short. And so we hold on to this truth, that God comes to us in ways that we can grasp as the Holy Spirit, as Jesus in the flesh, as God the Creator, one God, three in one. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we realize we'll never plumb the depths of the ocean that is the Trinity. We'll never be able to understand the entire mystery, but we pray that you would help us to believe. Help us to believe in you as you come to us each and every day. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Earlier in the service, we confessed our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Now we'll use this statement of faith based on Psalm 23. You, O God, are our shepherd. You provide everything we need. 
you let us rest in green meadows and lead us beside quiet streams. You renew our strength and guide us in ways that bring honor to your name. Even when we walk through difficult valleys, we will not fear, for you are never far away, protecting and comforting, guarding and guiding every step we take. You prepare a feast for us in the presence of our enemies. You welcome us as friends and lavish your blessings on us. We know that your goodness and unfailing love will continue to pursue us all the days of our lives, and that after our lives here are over, we will spend eternity in your presence. Today is the fifth Sunday of a month, and uh, as we do whenever a fifth Sunday comes around, we are sharing our service of prayer and healing. We'll offer uh, prayers uh, for the world and for the church and for those in our midst who are in need. There, are, uh, there is a link to some prayers that are available for individuals and families to adjust to their own use, and the link is found in the description to the video. So let us pray. Good and gracious God, we come to you to offer praise and thanks and to ask for your compassionate care. Pour your abundant love on all who are in need of healing and wholeness of body, mind, or spirit, and comfort those who grieve losses of any sort. Strengthen all who feel hurt, weak, alone, oppressed, or ignored. We especially pray for those in this congregation whose needs are known to you and ask you to look into our hearts as we name those we know of in times of difficulty. Bless all caregivers and give them courage and strength to continue their work when they feel weary or overwhelmed. Pour your spirit on this community called Zion. Empower us to always strive to be a place of welcome and support. Bless each person who enters these doors for any reason and send us out to be faithful witnesses of your compassionate mercy and a loving and calming presence to all those we meet in our lives. As the school year comes to an end, we give thanks for teachers and school staff, administrators, transportation people, and all who make the school day happen. Pour your blessings on students and their families, especially those who are graduating and moving forward to new places in their lives, and provide for rest and renewal during the summer break. On this Memorial Day weekend, stir up in us the hope that comes from you. Sustain and protect our military personnel and all who work to defend others. Guide national, state, and local leaders to seek goodness, righteousness, and truth on behalf of all and to work with a spirit of cooperation. We pray for hope for our neighbors around the globe. Raise up strong voices on behalf of those who are silenced or marginalized due to age, gender, race, economic status, or any other reason. Bring peace to places of unrest and empower those dedicated to liberty and justice for all people. As we celebrate the Holy Trinity, we offer thanksgiving for the blessings of your creation and the daily gifts that sustain us, and for those who work the earth to feed the world. We give you thanks for your amazing love that sent Jesus as our Savior and Redeemer, and ask your forgiveness when we stray from his teaching. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit sent to us to strengthen our faith and guide us on our daily journey. Give us trust to follow where you are leading us and courage to boldly enter new places in the name of Jesus. Help us to put our trust only in you and use us as ministers of your light to those living in darkness that your will be done at all times. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now receive the benediction, the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us 
be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we go from wherever we are into this day that the Lord has made. And with all we are and all we do, we will trust, live, and serve Christ Christ Jesus our Lord. Catch me when I'm falling And you told me 